If close racing and drama alone sold tickets, more fans would come to Monster Energy Supercross to watch the 250 class than the 450 class. The last two years alone have delivered exciting down to the final laps of the final race of the year championship fights in the 250 division. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the final episode of our five part preview show brought to you by Monster Energy. It is the 2020 Monster Energy Racer X preview show for Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Jason Wygant, Steve Mathis, Jason Thomas here inside the house that has won, as you can see, a lot of these 250 championships. I don't know if Mitch is on that behind that door. I hope he's not listening. <laughs> they could have, should have won a one both last year. I don't know if he's aware. Maybe he's blocked it out. Uh, Pro Circuit's really good. We would love to weigh their championship odds. We cannot. Because we do not know what coast riders in the 250 class will be racing, so we don't know who's against who. Steve? Yep. Uh, imagine just the NFL coming out with their schedule, and uh, you don't know what division your team's in. You don't know where they're playing. You don't know where, who they're playing. You don't know where to go. You have no idea when tickets are on sale. Tickets are probably going to be on sale the day before the game. Hopefully mm -hmm. you show up, guys. Yeah, once again, these teams are keeping the coast secret. We kind of have some ideas. We've heard some things, but for the most part, we have no idea. I understand that you keep it a bit, you want to keep your options open in case somebody gets hurt, but can you at least give us an early roster teams of who's riding which coast? No? You can't? No. What? Listen, Screw drama. the fans? Listen, drama queen. Wh what? Huh? All they okay, do is, got it. All okay. they got to do is turn on the TV or show up at Anaheim 1. You're going to okay, see great, great riders in the 250 class okay, racing great. for a championship. Great. That's good to know, everybody. Just show up at Anaheim 1. Hopefully it all works out. Only Let's not only get any talk about going. Let's not get the hype going. Let's not do anything. I, I can't predict any champions, good or bad, because we don't know who's right. racing against who. Only thing we know for sure are our sponsors. Of course, Monster Energy, our title sponsor, title sponsor for the series, title sponsor for the Pro Circuit Race Team. Also, Fly Gear, Max's Tires, LS2 Helmets, and Pro Taper. Thanks for backing this show. So all we can do then is run you down the roster of each 250 team. We Yay! don't know. Yeah, Yay! we don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know. Great, uh, great show. Now, as much as I would like to lead this off with the Pro Circuit team, coulda, shoulda, woulda, won both coasts last year. Austin Forkner, points lead, crashed. Adam Cien Cerullo, points lead, crashed. I gotta say, these days, the powerhouse seems to be this Monster Energy, Star Racing, Yamaha Lube, Yamaha team. They got the title with Dylan Ferrandis uh, in the West. And not only are they bringing Ferrandis back, Maybe to run 1W if he races west, maybe. They have bolstered the roster by getting Shane McElrath. That is a power move. Shane McElrath, a perennial race winner with Trolley Designs, Red Bull KTM, moving over. They have a lot of other capable riders over there. Justin Cooper, super fast. And uh, Colt Nichols with a bit of an injury, but he's proven maybe better than anybody how quickly he can bounce back. It's a real powerhouse team. We don't know what coasts, but they're good. I'm going to take a guess at this one. All I right. think it'll be Justin Cooper and Dylan Ferrandis on the west. Okay. And Shane McElrath and Colt Nichols on the east, I believe. I could get one of those guys wrong, mm -hmm. but uh, Dylan Ferrandis will be east, west, central, whatever coast <laughs> Dylan Ferrandis is on, he's going to be the favorite going in. Uh, absolutely uh, caught fire near the end of last year, of course, had the dramatic Vegas win uh, and had a great outdoors as well. So Dylan Ferrandis, I think JT, I don't care where he is, he's going to be the favorite for, to repeat. He should be great. Uh, I do think people could give him a run or beat him. Austin Forkner was absolutely spectacular last year. Obviously, his big crash in Nashville derailed his entire title chase. But if those two line up, I don't think the Ferrandis is necessarily the favorite over Austin Forkner. The wild card there is Shane McElrath. What does Young Whoop Star Racing do with Shane McElrath? Uh, I think he... Should have been the title favorite going in last year. Obviously, went way off the rails. He ended up leaving the team he was on before. He'll switch to the Yamaha, which we know is one of the strongest teams. Uh, I can't imagine that they would put Shane McElrath and Dylan Ferrandis on the same coast. That would be a horrible decision in my mind. But, hey, Will Hahn's capable of anything, right? Yeah. So. I mean, he, he, <laughs> Actually, I texted him yesterday. He said, all west. Right. There Just you go. to mix us up. Yeah. Right, right. So, hey, if you don't put McElrath and Ferrandis together, you're putting Justin Cooper and Ferrandis together. Don't sleep on Cooper. <sighs> yeah, you're right. But I, I still think that Shane McElrath, experienced, proven race winner. Listen, we all thought he'd be a title winner by now, yes. to be fair. Yep. And then Dylan Ferrandis, we know he's going in with the number one plate if he rides east. If not, he's going to be the favorite out west. So to me, that's the natural split. But yeah, I don't know. I think, I think the title's a little bit more up for grabs than just saying Ferrandis is the favorite. I just say that uh, for Cooper, I think it comes down to his development. He is a flying at the test track guy. 
Got hurt in his first season, was pretty good last year, didn't win a race. So how quickly does he keep accelerating? Does he go from race winner to championship contender immediately, or does he need another year? That's the question. What I can't understand about the McEnrath signing, and I certainly like Shane, and he's a great rider, and his win at uh, Bud's Creek last year was, was amazing. But mm -hmm. what I can't understand about Shane McEnrath thing is, okay, smash cut two years ago, uh, almost won the title, uh, was a bike issue away, won multiple races, everything else, right? Coming into this year, some things changed on the KTM 250, but not that much. And we, had, we saw a vastly different guy. Then he kind of got hurt. Then he got benched to, to not point out of the class. And, it, and the outdoors went terrible outside of that one very random day at Bud's Creek. So, so weird. Is it Shane or was it the bike? But two years ago, great. Last <laughs> year, not. I don't know. I, I, you know, what's, what's going on with Shane McElrath? Is, I, I have a lingering small question about Shane McElrath. Well, I think that's what makes the 250 class fun. When you get to the 450 class and it's not east-west and it's the tip of the spear, you kind of know what you're dealing with. The 250s open themselves up for wild cards. Very rarely do you have a rider who is just doing all the steps perfectly, but that's what Forkner was doing. He was okay in his first year. He started winning races in year two against Zach Osborne. Yeah. And then year three, he was going to be a champion. He was probably the closest to following the perfect model, but he messed it up. So do we have any questions about Forkner at all, or we just plug and play and say, Forkner of 2019, we'll just be back in 2020, good to go? I think the only thing that can stop Forkner from winning the East Coast title, other than possibly Dylan Ferrandis, is Austin Forkner. Mm -hmm. uh, he was that good last year. He had to have learned a big lesson, right? His crash was so silly. He was going after the fastest lap time, yeah. you know, in qualifying practice, which I get it. That's part of the game. But he had to have learned a big lesson there. He derailed his entire season all the way through the end of 2019 with a silly crash that wasn't necessary. It wasn't for points. It wasn't for anything other than the pride of being the fastest mm -hmm. qualifier. So. Remember, JT, up at that point, I believe he had crashed every single yes. practice session yep. all year long. And we yep. kept asking right, the question, right, right in our Racer X review, yep. When is this finally going to bite him? He was having multiple crashes in these qualifying sessions. So you've got to think someone here at Pro Circuit sat him down and said, listen, man, it's just qualifying practice. Who cares? Yeah. Go win races. Go win the championship. So I look for a much smarter, much more mature Austin Forkner in 2020. Okay, another power move. Shane McElrath leaves Troy Lee Designs, goes to Star Racing Yamaha. Just as big is Jordan Smith leaving Troy Lee Designs KTM and coming here. He's going to race for Pro Circuit. We've been saying it for a number, of years on, a number of years on this show, Steve. It's time for Smith to make that leap. He's come so close to a title. He's won races. But i got to imagine if he doesn't win a title this year, he's not going to be happy no matter how many races he wins. Still waiting for Jordan Smith. Still waiting for Roger Hampshire. Yeah. <laughs> that's yep. the, that's yep. the cue of these, all of these races, right? Mm -hmm. They're veterans. They're, they're on good teams. Yeah. They have all the uh, things that you want in a race winner or championship winner, and we don't get a lot of it. Uh, Jordan, yeah, big switch. Poor Tyler Keefe, by the way, at TLD KTM. Dude. Boy, oh boy, he's lost a lot of experience and wins with, with Smith and McElrath leading. Um, I'm interested in Jordan Smith. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, he's a veteran. Will he win races? Yes. Uh, he can win a championship, I think. Uh, but he's always just come up a little bit short. So is this the team? Is this the bike that does it? Uh, I guess we'll see. That's, that's what he wants. Now, they've also added Cameron McAdoo. Now, hilariously, I don't know if you guys remember this. We snuck over to Mitch Payton's desk last year. And remember, there was a post-it note in his there desk. Was. Call Cameron McAdoo back. <laughs> I guess it took him a year yeah. to call him back. <laughs> right. But McAdoo is now on the team, and Garrett Marchbanks back. It seems like Marchbanks has been around a while. That was actually his first Supercross season last year, so I think jury is totally out. We're, we don't know what we're going to get. Got a podium, Marchbanks, worked with Ivan Tedesco. That's all good, but yeah. absolutely. Uh, and it's come from Mitch Payton himself to me. Mm -hmm. Garrett has to make something happen this year. Now, whatever that version of uh, make something happen right. is, but it's got to happen this year. It's in his contract yeah. year. Uh, okay. as, and for me, as far as uh, McAdoo, huge sleeper, uh, podium Vegas last year, working with Nick Way, as I mentioned in an early episode, uh, right alongside AC. Um, you can make a case that uh, Cameron's never come into the season as healthy and as ready to go as he has now. Of course, he had the Geico ride, but it was sort of a mid-season thing. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think Cameron McAdoo, JT, I'm not calling championship, but yeah. race win? Well, and I'll be honest, I underestimated him all summer long last year. When he got the fill-in ride at TLD KTM, Every single weekend, I underestimated how good he would be, and I just didn't see it coming. And, and week after week after week, he overperformed for what I, I guessed he would do. I'm not going to be that guy in 2020. The, the small video clips that I've seen of him riding, the program that proven program that he's on with Nick Way and Adam Cincerillo, I expect big things from him. He's a great starter. That's half the battle in this 250 class. I think he's going to win a race. 
I don't know if he has the, the firepower to go up and beat Forkner or Ferrandis or those guys, but I absolutely think he's going to be there week in and week out. Maybe he has a bad race that derails a championship, but I think he's going to win his first race in 2020. When, when he rode for Pulp MX at Straight Rhythm? Ram it. I saw the potential, folks. I saw the future, and it was Kevin McEnroe. Ram it. Actually, I believe it was your buddy Phil Nicoletti that <laughs> paved was, the way. It was. Shout out to yes, Phil. Yes, yeah. Uh, another team does have a champion. I want to thank our sponsors, which is Fly Racing, LS2 Helmets, Maxxis Tires, and Pro Taper, and Monster Energy, our uh, title sponsor for these shows. This team is known as well for its sponsor as it is for the brand they ride. It is the Geico team, the Geico Honda team, and they have a champion in Chase Sexton. He was the one in position to pick up the pieces when Forkner had his crash in Nashville in the East. Now, I think you might see Sexton race the West, so he might not run the number one plate. No one's committing to anything officially. Who knows? We'd like to know. But, I, I know, agree. We're not going to. Big team over there. You have Sexton. You have both Hunter and Jet Lawrence, the Lawrence brothers. Jeremy Martin will be back. Joe Shimoda making his debut as a Supercross pro. And Christian Craig we'll talk about in a minute. Back to racing as well. Let's start with Sexton. Um, he's got nothing to worry about. He's already got a title. He's already got a team Honda deal on a 450, which will start in the summer. And then he'll race Supercross for the next year. So Sexton, just kick back, relax. Cash him checks, he's Look, good, right? Some riders have won 125 slash 250 championships with no wins. It's happened. Mm -hmm. Anyone it, in particular stick out? Well, yeah, Tim Ferry being okay. Ricky Carmichael. But anyways, Sexton won one with one win. Yep. And I gotta be honest, I mean, Forkner was gonna wrap that up. Oh, I gotta be honest, everybody knows that. Forkner yeah. was gonna win that one. So yeah. to me, if I'm Honda, and I'm putting mm -hmm. Chase Sexton on a 450 outdoors and then 450 Supercross for, for beyond, yeah. I really need to see more than I've done. And I know he won the championship. I know this sounds ridiculous. He's got the title. I, I know. I need to see more from Chase Sexton. Yeah. In indoors. Well, it's hard to say I need to see more when he's your defending champ. I understand when you really dive into it, Austin Forkner had him covered. I think that's a fair assessment for the season last year. What I want to see more from him is come out and be the best guy, which I think is what you're alluding yeah, yeah, to. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Don't don't be second fiddle to Austin Forkner and yes, you won the title, but you weren't necessarily on Forkner's Justin level. Justin Cooper was on Sexton's level as well. Yes. It wasn't like yeah. Sexton was clearly yeah. a second guy. Yeah, right. they battled. Yes. I think for the ride he's stepping into, I would agree with you that he needs to come out and at least at a few races, I'm not saying you have to dominate every weekend, come out at a few races and be the absolute best guy on the track on a 250 that weekend. Then I don't think anybody can really pose any questions as like, should he really be moving up? Should he really go into the factory 450 truck? If he does that just a couple times, I think he will prove his worth, and then everybody will keep their mouth shut, and he'll be able to fill that, fill that spot. And if I'm Geico or Star Yamaha, I'm running, and you're able to run the number one plate on the coast. I'm, I, I'm I doing agree. that every time. So yep. I'm telling Chase Sexton, go back to the east. You're yep. familiar with the tracks. You're familiar with the, with the terrain. You're an east coast guy. And same thing with Dylan. You're staying on the west. Well, I, so. and, and just to follow that point, right, the natural thought, I, I think, is that they would put him in the west, They'll let him ride the 450 on the east for Supercross, get him acclimated to the 450 before this move for the summer, okay? To me, so what? Let him ride the number one plate. That's where you get all your marketing and all, the, all this hype, right? It's so awesome to have a number one plate out there. I don't think anyone expects him to be a national championship contender this summer, so who cares? Yeah. Let him go out there and get his feet wet and learn the 450 during the summer. Get out there and put the number one plate on the track every single Well, we weekend. understand he got dinged up a little bit this offseason. Yep. And so your best chance for success for Chase Sexton is on the East Coast. Yeah, well, I want him to so. prepare. I just, I think they're really trying to give him the best chance for success during the summer. But at the same time, your expectation isn't a championship. To me, the number one plate is so valuable and so cool and such a maybe once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Man, I would really allow, I would want that to happen. All right, but the thing is, they've got several other riders that are kind of earmarked. Jeremy Martin is back. He missed an entire year of racing due to his back. Looked very good in the off-season races that he did. Paris was but good he, and, yeah. uh, and Munch Cup. So he seems ready, but he has maintained all along, I am racing east. But uh, some people are saying, look out. He's going to be really There's fast. There's some heavy J-Mart hype out there, folks, from people that have been around him and watched him ride and yeah. everything else. I'm a little bit hesitant. I, I need to see this from Jay Martin. Never been a Supercross specialist. Got four or five wins, I believe, in main events. But and I feel always a flying at the test track guy. So yeah. there are some times when you hear it, you're like, yeah. mm, will it show up in the races? Right. Let's, let's not forget, though, the year that Zach Osborne won the 250 championship. Yeah. Martin was arguably the best guy at the end of that series. He was winning. Running a lot away, at the end, yeah. catching, coming through the pack mm -hmm. at Foxborough, winning races. Yeah. 
Uh, so if he can refine that form, he can absolutely be right at the front. Yeah. It's avoiding that form where we saw him in the West Coast crashing every single well, weekend. Yeah, yeah. So yep. it's, it's which J-Mart do we see? But what a comeback story if he can get up front and win some races. I think for the rest of the team, uh, a lot of the story is going to be we're just being patient here. You've literally got three guys who haven't raced Supercross before, the Lawrence brothers and Joe Shimoda. I know there's a lot of Chet Lawrence hype right now yep. coming out of the amateurs. He has very little background in Supercross. I think the worst thing for him would be for him to get overhyped. And even if he gets a seventh in a race, that's not uh, bad. But I think it almost would look disappointing because he's getting hyped. He's 16 he needs, years old. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to be, it's going to be, hey, just learn. The most impressive yeah. thing about Jet Lawrence is, is the fact that you can top 10 nationals and then go ride an amateur class and then yeah. race Supercross. So <laughs> that's really impressive okay. right there to me. I All found right. that incredible. So good well, job, Jet Lawrence, on that. I, th I think, so. I think, well, the point you're making, we just, just manage expectations. Yeah. Allow him to yeah. grow into the season and don't, don't think he's going to go podium or win race or any of that. Just go out there and race. Yeah. Get your feet wet. Yep. Maybe 2021 is your year to really yes. shine. Yep. But yeah, there's so much hype around this kid, which is awesome. You just have to be realistic about what's what's really expected for 2020. Especially with the lack of Supercross experience. Of course. He and his brother, they're, when they came through in Australia, the Supercross championship not as well established as it was in, back in the days when Chad Reed could hit the ground running here in the United States. And one more rider to mention, Christian Craig, who was at one point suspended from March of 2018 through March of 2020, actually got that suspension reduced. I think this might be a first. And he will be able to race at Anaheim 1. Craig needs to race the West Coast. He's got that huge weight lifted off his shoulders. He's back racing. And now it turns to the hard part, actually doing well in the races. Last year was not good. Uh, it's been a couple years since we've seen the race-winning speed from Christian Craig. So here it we has. go again. Can he get it back? It has. It's a big mm -hmm. year for Christian Craig. Yeah. I feel like we've been saying that for a while. But yep. I know last year he knew about the suspension and kind of weighed on him a little bit. Right. Uh, he's going to be on his preferred West Coast dirt. So, yeah, big year for Christian Craig. I'm sure he's going to go to the test track. That oh, yeah. I have no doubt. On a Wednesday yeah. afternoon, he'll Killing be it. flying in Corona, mm -hmm. but we need to see it on the weekends. Okay, Rockstar Energy Husqvarna, another power move. <laughs> RJ Hampshire oh. leaving that Geico Honda team and going to Rockstar Husqvarna. We have said this about Hampshire, Craig, and Smith for several years. Is this the year they make the leap? Another shot at Hampshire. Is the change of scenery what it's going to take? I, I think Hampshire is going to be really good. Uh, look, he's... He's always been a guy, uh, he was never happy with his bike last year on the Geico team, let's be honest. Him and Hunter Lawrence both vocal about it. Mm -hmm. He's always had his own program there uh, in uh, Central Florida, kind of away from everybody, uh, not really, you know, knowing what, nobody really knows what he's going on, got going on. Well, that's over with. He's on a Husqvarna again, the Rockstar Husky, mm -hmm. which, you know, has been proven to be a good bike. Not that Geico isn't, but the Rockstar Husky has mm -hmm. been proven. Uh, he's training with Alden Baker. He's being monitored. He's being looked at as far as what he does every single day. And I think, I think you'll see RJ, he, he had a child over the, the offseason as well, which brings new maturity and new, new sort of, um, I guess, drive for somebody sometimes. Uh, I think RJ Hampshire is going to be really good. I, I, I don't know if he's going to win the championship this year, but I think for a guy who's got, I believe, two career podiums in Supercross, look it up, folks. It's not that many for yeah. as many years as he was at Geico. This will be a step up, JT. He's going to really do well. Well, I think it's the question is, is he Zach Osborne 2.0? No. It, well, if you, if you look at it, right, he's okay. coming off of a Geico yeah. Honda yeah. tenure where he didn't live up to his own expectation, right? He didn't necessarily deliver the results he and the team wanted. He's a little bit older, just has a child. He's going for a rebirth at Rockstar Husqvarna, switching nice teams. There. He's going to Alden Baker's program for the first time. So there are so many of these things that are exactly the same thing. I don't know if the results are the same, right? Zach came out and won two titles and was amazing. I don't know that that's in the cards for RJ, but it's certainly lining up for that to happen. He's going in and riding with the likes of, well, Marvin's hurt, but Jason Anderson and, and Cooper Webb and Zach Osborne day in and day out where they're just punishing him, right? So you show up on race day and like, oh, these guys aren't that good. I've been getting my butt kicked by all these great 450 guys every day. So I think there's an opportunity for him to come in and shock everyone because I don't think expectations are so high. The talk's going to be Ferrandis. The talk's going to be McElrath and Forkner and all these guys. RJ can come in quietly when the gate drops, then make some noise. Got Jalik Swallow over there, another rookie making his Supercross debut. Who does he work with? Mm, he works with somebody that has been known for great Supercross rides over the years. Uh, 1999 okay. summer cross being just oh, one off yes, top of my head. That's not what you meant. Tim Sorry. Curry. Tim Curry. And, and, and fly racing. And Michael Moseman, who quietly really stepped up the game late in Supercross and into outdoors last year, looking for an improvement season uh, for the very friendly Michael Moseman. We mentioned all these power moves. 
a lot of it came at the expense of that Troy Lee Designs Red Bull KTM team. They lost McElrath, they lost Smith. It's a true rebuilding year for them. They pick up Brandon Hartraff, they bring Brian Moreau over from France, and they have two riders that came through their amateur ranks, Derek Drake and Pierce Brown. So I don't know where the expectations are. I, I've got to imagine they're very tempered to say, we're working with these guys. We expect them to get better later. But as far as championships, it's going to be a, a long slog, I think, for TLD with all this new talent. Poor Tyler Keefe, as I said. I'm a Brandon Hartraff guy. I like the kid mm -hmm. from Jersey. Yeah, uh, Works hard. I think Brandon will... I don't know how many top fives Brandon Hartraff has in his career, but not that many. He's been like... Six seven guy a lot. Yeah, yeah. I look for him to be in the top five now. I think he creeps in there. Maybe he gets a podium. Maybe it's a Cameron McAdoo situation where you mm -hmm. can grab a podium. But I like Brandon Hartraft, and I'm on board with that. The other three guys just put the emoji of me being like this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We've seen flyers taken on Frenchmen before. Yeah. Sometimes it has worked. A lot of times it has not. We will see where Brian Moreau uh, ends up. And as for uh, Drake and Brown, same thing. When you get to young rookies yeah. in Supercross, who knows? I, I, Brown has a ton of talent. We'll see if he can actually deliver on it. Uh, one more team to mention. Any other contenders? Any other contenders? Mm, well, you did forget one man. He's experienced. Mm -hmm. He is really good outdoors. Okay. Uh, and he's picked up his indoor craft the last little okay. while. Okay. Is he yeah. someone you would want to make a bet based on? Uh, no. Okay. We would never want to make a bet no. on this man. No. Alex Martin, JGR <laughs> Suzuki. Um, yeah, JT, I mean, more of the same for Amar. He's a steady veteran. He's a top five guy. He can get on the box if things work right. Of course, I, I, I made that bet with Marty Davalos last year, and I lost, and I had to come clean. Clean which, these floors. These floors right here. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen the video yet, but hopefully soon. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I just look for more of the same from Alex Martin. To me, it comes down to one thing. Okay, we saw him struggle pretty much all of 2019 Supercross. The beginning of the Outdoor Championship hold, was... Hold on, hold on. He started 2019 Supercross good. Good. He started good. He I was don't know top five. He was going forward. Chips yes. is also... The Nashville... When Nashville hit, we don't know. It okay. went bad from there. Let's just say things weren't going great all, most of the season. Okay, Half the season. They show up at Redbud with a new engine package, and things really turned around. If they can find that same step forward in the engine package, I think that will get him to the front of the starts in Supercross. I think he has a chance to do well. To me, that's the linchpin of this whole thing, is getting him to the front on the starts, which didn't seem like it was happening a lot. We saw Dakota a few times get up there, but it wasn't happening for Amart enough. If they can get him to the front, good things are going to happen. If not, I don't see Amart with the raw sprint speed to come from ninth and get into that podium conversation. He's in good shape. He is in good shape. And, he, and the nickname Troll Train is tremendous. I wonder where that came from. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, his teammate is Jimmy Dakota, who you mentioned. A podium guy. Had a podium, got up on yeah. the podium last year. Probably Amart in the West, probably Jimmy D in the East. Who but, knows, though? I mean, why would they? Yeah. Uh, why would they say? Why tell us? Um, we've talked about uh, your fantasy thing. Do you do it in the 250s? I don't even yes, know. Yes, we do. Okay. PubMexFantasy.com. Right. Right. You played it last year. I blocked you, it out. Did you give up at some point? Or did you actually? No, I, I entered a team you, every week and it never got better. Okay, all right. <laughs> it all right. never got better. PulpMexFantasy.com, JT. We'll know who's riding each coast by the time Anaheim 1 comes. Thank God for that. Do, uh, uh, how? Uh, you will? Brian Moreau, JT, probably should be probably an 18. Uh, we generally make first-time riders an 18, but man, on that kind of equipment, it's, it's a big ask to put somebody that far that was half of a handicap. He'll be 12, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah, okay. you never know with a first-time Supercross. Okay. The, the 250 class, though, really is where you can take some serious chances. Mm -hmm. Guys that maybe your casual fan isn't that familiar with, like a Chris Howell. Right. Or these guys that are on the fringe, right? Maybe they make the main, main event, maybe they don't. But if they do, holy cow, can you get a ton of points. Uh, Jerry Robin, giveth and taketh. Right. Oh. And, and these are the types of races in the LCQ. You're just going to see me a ball <laughs> of nerves, and I, I can yeah. barely watch. I have, you know, I'm watching with one eye because the, everything is hinging on this guy that you know nothing about. You barely knew what kind of bike he raced until that afternoon, yeah. and then you picked your, and your whole fantasy season rides on his you know, making it for four minutes. So it adds a, a ton of intrigue, and honestly, the 250 class is much more fun because you have these unknowns that your, your whole season is riding mm -hmm. on, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Zombie Chris Blow was a big Pulp Next Fantasy guy last year, got a <laughs> yeah. lot of points. Uh, Jerry Robin, people, Jerry Robin's riding a, a new team this year on a Honda, and he will shock you. Both ways. Yeah, I, anything. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, surprising yeah. no matter what yeah, happens. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of other 250 teams that are not the factory level teams. You got the Gas Monkey team that'll have Jacob Hayes and Josh Osby. Yeah. You got Penrite Honda, the Australian team, is going to have a squad with the Mitchell Oldenburg and Australian Lou Clout. So many other teams, and they'll all be factors in the fantasy game. And they're all hoping that they have a good enough result to make the leap to the big teams. 
in 2021. You never know in the 250s. Uh, we do know our sponsors as we wrap up our fifth of five episodes. Big thanks to Monster Energy for allowing us to come here and shoot in the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki Race Shop again. Fly Racing Pro Taper, Max's Tires, that tire developed by Jeremy, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath. Two-time yeah. 250 Supercross champion. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it did ride Kawasaki's to a Supercross win. Most mm -hmm. people are like, what's his Cowie connection? This class, he won races in this class for Cowie. And uh, Fly Racing, LS2 Helmets, Pro Taper, Maxis, and our title sponsor, Monster. That's it, we'll see you at the races. Enjoy the new revamped pit party. You'll have Daniel Blair and Jim Holly broadcasting race day live from the pit party. You can charge your phone, you can get drinks. A lot of fun stuff coming your way at all the Monster Energy Supercross rounds, so go to supercrosslive.com for info on that. RacerXOnline.com for all the info on the races.